So thank you for this nice introduction. It's an honor to be here. My name is Patrick, and today I will present Resi. Resi is a highly flexible textile pressure sensor, which is based on resistive yarns. This is a joint work between the Media Interaction Lab and the Soft Metaphysics Department of the Johannes Kepler University. Before I dive deeper, let's start with a live demo. So this is our prototype, and you can see here two resistive yarns sawn into a standard textile. And by applying pressure onto this intersection, we can already detect pressure with just two single yarns. Okay, that's it. So why augmenting textiles? Well, textiles are most often soft and comfortable. They're stretchable and non-rigid, and they're omnipresent in our daily lives. However, they're rarely augmented with interactive capabilities. By researching the related work, we discovered that the most common pressure sensing techniques for textiles are capacitive, optical, and resistive. Capacitive approaches are based on fabric capacitors that consist of conductive yarn or fabric used as electrodes and non-conductive fabric which is used as dielectric. Impressive progress on capacitive sensing has been made with Project Jacquard, which uses a yarn-based capacitive sensor. This sensor can be embedded in any textile to detect taps and swipes. Yesterday, we have heard the amazing talk of Alex and his group how they used this technique in IO braid. Another sensing technique to detect pressure in textiles is to use optical fibers. Rotmeyer and others presented a method using flexible thermoplastic silicon fibers woven into a textile. Mechanical stress applied onto these fibers cross, changes the cross section and therefore the transmitted light intensity. This method can be easily achieve, achieved from a yarn perspective However, um, the, measurement, the measurement hardware is quite complex. Resistive sensing approaches are based on fabric resistors that consist of conductive yarns and fabrics acting as electrodes and separated by a semiconductive material. Sundholm and others presented an approach consisting of two conductive layers placed perpendicular over each other, forming a grid, and a semicondu semiconductive layer in between. Apply pressure onto this layer stack, squeeze the layers together, and changes the overall resistance. We presented a similar but stretchable approach in 2016. With this approach, we explored different application fields and gathered benefits and challenges of this residue sensing technique. While resistive sensing approaches are suitable for various use cases to the reliable uh, pressure sensing, they struggle with mechanical errors, which are caused by the multi-layer setup. One problem, for example, are wrinkles, as seen in this figure. Or alignment shifts, which can happen when top and bottom electrodes are getting misplaced. Another problem with current resistive sensing techniques is the connection between the soft textile and the rigid driver electronics. Therefore, our goal was to overcome these issues of the, previous sensing of the previous technique by reducing the layer stack from a three-layer approach to a single-layer approach. And this has been achieved within RACI. Our newly designed yarn features conductive as well as resistive properties, and it is highly flexible and can be used for a wide variety of textile manufacturing techniques. Only two of these yarns, as you have seen it in the demo, uh, built a pressure sensor. But how does this work? The yarn consists of a highly conductive metallic core, which is coated with a carbon-based carbon -based polymer. Two of these yarns intersecting each other already build a pressure sensor. Apply mechanical stress onto the, the intersection, press the conductive particles together, 
and cause a resistance drop between the two electrodes. The, the yarns have been developed with different thicknesses to investigate which performs best for which manufacturing technique. To evaluate the characteristics of the yarn, we run three technical evaluations. First of all, we have been interested in the pressure sensing behavior. Therefore, we built an apparatus which allowed us to press two yarns against each other. The applied force and resistance have been measured during this procedure. As you can see here in this graph, all yarns have shown a pressure sensitive behavior. The force, the best force to resistance ratio have been achieved with the twisted yarn here displayed in purple. This technical evaluation has shown that all yarns are highly sensitive between zero and 0 0.6 Newton. However, you have but you have to keep in mind that this sensor is relatively small in comparison to the actuating object, such as a finger. Therefore, only a fraction of the applied force affects the sensor. Moreover, we have been interested in the tensile behavior of the yarn. We built an apparatus to run an optimal tensile strength test. Um, here, the yarn gets soldered onto two pickup holders and the linear slide pulls apart the yarn. During this procedure, the force as well as the resistance have been measured. As we expected, the thicker the yarn gets, the more tension it can withstand. The tested yarns have only shown low standard deviations throughout the tested samples. The highest deviation has been achieved with the twisted yarn. Uh, because the twist, because single yarns of the whole strand tears individually till the whole strand collapses. Furthermore, this test has shown that soldering, that the soldering connection is a robust way to connect the textile with the measurement electronic. We also have been interested in the conductive behavior of the yarn. The thicker the yarn gets, the more conductive it becomes. Even the thinnest yarn of only 80 micrometer thickness has a resistance of 9 ohm per meter. And this is comparatively low compared to off-the-shelf yarns such as distributed by Shieldex. Given the high conductance, the yarns are suitable for creating interactive textiles at a large scale and enables flexible placement of the driver electronic as it is not required to replace them next to the sensor. To investigate the suitability of these yarns regarding textile manufacturing processes, we run three initial tests. All of the yarns have shown a pressure sensitive behavior. However, not every yarn was suitable for every textile manufacturing technique. While every yarn can be hands-on, not every yarn can be used for machine sawing or weaving. Our initial tests have shown that for that the thinnest yarn does not withstand the tensions of a sawing machine, while the thickest yarn were too stiff to be sawn. For weaving, only the thicker single yarns did not work due to just stiffness. However, the suitability is strongly dependent on the manufacturing machine. As we see Daisy as an enabling technology, we, built, we developed a prototyping pipeline which makes it possible to quickly and easily prototype interactive textiles. Therefore, three major steps are required. First of all, the textile fabrication, the connection and readout, and the signal processing and mapping. Let's start with the textile fabrication. We divided the textile manufacturing techniques into additive and constructive methods. Additive methods such as sawing, machine sawing, or embroidery can be used to enhance uh, existing textile with interactive capabilities. Constructive methods use the resistive yarns already during the, the creation process. Constructive methods are, for example, weaving or knitting. Then the connection and the readout electronics. 
One major benefit of, our, of this yarns is that it solves the problematic of previous techniques to connect the textile with the driver electronics. Current, meta, current methods use snap buttons, stitches, grams, and glue to connect driver electronic with the hardware. However, none of these connections, all of these connections struggle with a high amount of sensors at a fine pitch. As mentioned before, the, our yarns have a metallic core and a resistive coating and you can easily remove the coating with a soldering iron at the temperature of 350 degrees. The electronic circuits which are needed for, the, for this sensing technique range from a simple voltage divider to more complex circuits that enables the measurement of a sensor, of a sensor matrix. To measure a sensor matrix, we developed a flexible PCP to reduce the transition between the soft textile and the rigid driver electronics. The third step of the pipeline is the signal processing and mapping. To enable easy and fast prototyping, we built an open web platform that allows future developers to build on our technology. This platform, independent application, allows developers to visualize, utilize, and process the data. Moreover, it is configurable and extendable to allow rapid prototyping. In this paper, we also wanted to show the versatility of this yarn in creating interactive textiles. Therefore, we augmented different objects with the sensing capabilities by using a variety of textile manufacturing processes. Let's start with the additive manufacturing techniques. For hand sewing, we saw three sensors into the armrest of a couch, which can detect simple gestures such as swipes or strong and slight touches. With this sound interface, we are able to control the color and the brightness of a hue lamp. For larger sensor patches, hand sawing can be impractical. Therefore, we tested the machine sawing approach where we use an off-the-shelf sawing machine. We created a six by six sensor patch on a pair of pants, which enables simple slide gestures in all four directions, as well as tap, ge tap gestures and double tap gestures. With this gesture, we control the Spotify music player on a smartphone. Moreover, we wanted to show that even different stitching patterns can be used to create interactive surfaces. Embroidery is used for embellishment of fabrics. Similar to other techniques is to create intersection between two resistive yarns. As you can see here in this video, we use different stitching patterns, such as a lazy daisy stitch, which works as a rotational control, or a crisscross stitch, which we use as a slider. We also wanted to show that these yarns can be used for constructive techniques such as weaving. For weaving, the resistors yarns have been woven and weft and warped direction in combination with monofilament PET fibers. As visible in this picture, you can see the resistive yarns in black and grayish color and the PET fibers in white. Depending on the density of those functional yarns, the spatial resolution can be increased or decreased. We use the sensor patch of 1,024 sensors in the corner of a handbag to control one's phone. A corner band gesture can be used to send a text. A tap gesture to mute a call. Opening the bag triggered the phone's flashlight to help find items in the bag. And the side grip gesture triggers the navigation app. With this prototype, we wanted to show that even more complex gestures, such as deformation gestures, can be detected. Summarizing, we have shown a null yarn-based pressure sensing. The design and implementation of of a sensing platform and its versatility of use. 
Unfortunately, so far it is not stretchable and it cannot be dyed, uh, <laughs> dyed due to the resistive coating. Therefore, for future work, we would like to explore knitting as a manufacturing technique because um, knitted, knitted fabrics are stretchable and first tests have already shown promising results. Moreover, we, want, we are interested in embedding our sensor in reinforced carbon fiber polymers. Initial tests have shown that it can be used for deformation detection. This can be beneficial for future wind turbines. I also want to thank my co-authors and the funding, our partners and funding agencies who are able to do this work. Um, I also want to mention that we, our lab is offering PhD and postdoc positions. If you're interested in the topic, you are welcome to join our lab. So thanks for listening. Any questions? Hi. Thanks for this great idea and great project. Um, this paper is bringing a, an interesting concept, uh, but it lacks the main fundamental uh, publication. It's re reproducibility. You didn't publish anything about the coating, the, all the, the technical details, the chemical elements, the protocol. Uh, are you willing to share it on your website at least? Um, so as soon as we're getting more yarns, because this is a funded project and we all we just started right now, and the yarns have been done in an industrial process. So it's first it's wire drawn and then it's deep coated and so forth. And I think it's pretty hard to do it on your own. So as soon as we're getting more of these yarns, we will offer them. So you will get sample kits if you it, want to have It's it. all about reproductibility so that people can actually do it themselves. This is public money. It should be public knowledge. And <laughs> this is, it seems obvious to me. I don't know. Yeah. OK, well, maybe, maybe we can take that question <laughs> offline. But, but I think it's a great point. Um, all right, well, while, OK, Dan, yeah. Dan Ashbrook, University of Copenhagen. Um, so I'm wondering about the, uh, the stiffness and the bendability of the yarns. Um, I've done a little bit of, of work with uh, like stainless steel thread, mm -hmm. and when trying to sew it by hand, eventually it gets all tangled up and, and, and it turns into a mess. And I'm curious if, if this thread is more flexible and, and less stiff. I, I brought it with me, so if you want to test it, um, you can join after the talk. It's I have it with me, you can wrap it around the finger and you can easily hand sew it. It's not that much different to, to a normal yarn. Cool, thanks. 